Originally released in Japan in 1987, the first installment of the Final Fantasy series was unveiled in North America in the summer of 1990. A remake of the original was released 13 years later on the PlayStation under the title of Final Fantasy Origins. Players assume the role of the Warriors of Light, stepping out into the vast wilderness on a quest to restore radiance to the world's four darkened crystals. Audiences across the world were taken aback by Final Fantasy's deep, interactive story and gameplay. Along with naming their characters, players were allowed to assign them classes Warrior, Monk, Thief, White Mage, Black Mage, and Red Mage were all available to choose from. While further along in the story, players were given the opportunity to attain advanced classes. Battles took place within a side view window displaying both monsters and party members. However, what truly set Final Fantasy apart from other role-playing games of the same era was the detailed battle animation. On-screen graphics would vary depending on what weapons a character had equipped or what magic spells were cast. When crossing the expansive world, players were not restricted to traveling afoot. There were boats, canoes, and even an airship that unlocked the door to the skies, permitting travel to the far corners of the globe. After obtaining a boat, players could also access a hidden mini-game by entering a secret command. However, this was more than just a simple extra. If successfully completed, players would earn precious gill. Most players outside of Japan consider Final Fantasy II as a sequel to Final Fantasy. However, that was in fact the fourth game in the series. The actual Final Fantasy II, originally appearing on the family computer in Japan, would not see release in North America until Final Fantasy Origins in 2003. The story begins as Firion, Maria, Guy and Leon flee the marauding Black Knights of the Palamitian Empire. They soon meet a resistance struggling against the Empire's tyranny and so set out on a quest to restore peace to the world. In a departure from role-playing game conventions, Final Fantasy II's battle system had no experience points and no levels. Instead, the game employed a unique use-based system, as characters used a specific class of weapons such as swords, their skill with that type of weapon would improve. Of course, without character levels, attributes such as strength, hit points, and magic points needed a new method of advancement as well. The answer? Actions taken in battle determined the development of these attributes. For example, characters that used a large number of magic points to cast spells would see their available magic points increase as the game progressed. Final Fantasy II's innovations extended even to character interactions. During conversations, occasionally key words would appear. These could be memorized and then discussed with other characters to advance the story. This heightened the player's sense of involvement and represented a true revolution for its time. As players explore the world, they meet a wide array of characters, many of whom offer guidance or even join players in battle. These encounters provided some of Final Fantasy II's most dramatic and touching moments. One of these characters bears special mention, the now legendary Sid, 
who marks his first appearance in the series here as the pilot of an airship who's always ready to ferry the party across the globe. Though the world was vast, players had many choices when deciding how to get around. The canoe and boat made their return and were joined by a snow craft to cross the icy fields of the north. The airship too made an encore appearance, but the list wouldn't be complete without what has become a hallmark of the series, the chocobo. A game of many firsts, the chocobo also made its debut in Final Fantasy II. Much more than an easy way to get from point A to point B, this lovable yellow bird has become the de facto mascot of the series. In 1994, Final Fantasy III was released in North America. However, this was actually the sixth installment in the series. The original Final Fantasy III only saw release in Japan in the spring of 1990. The main story of Final Fantasy III focused on four young friends from the tiny village of Ur. One day, the four are drawn to a mysterious cave housing an ancient altar. From that grotto, the companions obtain the power of the wind crystal and are bestowed an important quest to banish the darkness eating away at the world. Thus, their journey begins. One of the most exciting features in Final Fantasy III was the unique job system, which allowed players to adjust character professions to meet the varying challenges presented in the game's numerous dungeons and battlefields. At first, only a small number of jobs are offered. However, as the player unlocks the power of the crystals, more options become available. During the hero's adventures, they cross paths with numerous other travelers who join them on their journey. While these companions do not participate in battle, they do play important roles in the story and often assist the heroes by providing them with helpful advice. Several modes of transportation were available, from chocobos to sea ships, and even submarines to explore the oceans. Players could also pilot airships, though they were quite different from those appearing in the first two games of the series. One ancient ship could navigate underwater, while another was a colossal vessel equipped with shops and even quarters for the heroes to rest. Sid made his appearance in this game near the beginning of the story. As payment for bringing him medicine to save his ailing wife, he modifies the hero's airship, allowing them to travel to previously unreachable locations. Final Fantasy III also marked the birth of summoning magic, a prominent feature in the series. The summoned beasts in this game could only be called forth by two specific jobs, evokers and summoners. Packs for the summoned beasts could be purchased in stores or obtained after defeating the powerful entities themselves. Final Fantasy IV's release in 1991 brought the series to a new platform, the Super Nintendo Entertainment System. Originally known in North America as Final Fantasy II, the Super Nintendo Classic was actually a modified version of the Japanese Final Fantasy IV. The story follows the Dark Knight Cecil, commander of the Red Wings, pride of the Kingdom of Baron's airship fleet. Cecil begins to doubt the orders handed down by his king, but before he can act on these doubts, he is ordered to depart once more, this time with his dear friend Cain. Final Fantasy IV saw the introduction of the Active Time Battle, or ATB system, that would be used in many of the titles to follow. 
In the ATB system, time flows continuously during battle, with enemy and character actions requiring a certain amount of time to execute. Since the clock ticks even while deciding a character's actions or casting a spell, timing attacks and using magic to alter time's flow is critical. The ATB system was a revolutionary way to keep battles exciting and involving, while also adding strategic depth. Final Fantasy IV had its share of unique vehicles, from hovercrafts to skim over the desert sands, to airships that traveled the skies and the dark caverns of the underworld. A legendary airship known as the Lunar Whale allowed players to travel the gulfs of space and even explore the moon. Even chocobos came in multiple varieties, the yellow earthbound bird being joined by its flying black kin to carry players along their way. Sid made his appearance as an engineer for the Kingdom of Baron. A longtime friend of Cecil, Sid comes to the aid of players at several key points throughout the game, allowing them the use of his airship and even briefly joining the party. Though not released in North America for the Super Nintendo Entertainment System, players had the opportunity to experience Final Fantasy V in Final Fantasy Anthology for the PlayStation. An unknown force is draining the power of the Four Crystals, disrupting the balance of nature. The future of the planet is uncertain until the arrival of a lone hero. The story of Final Fantasy V revolves around a young traveler named Bartz and the people he meets along his journey. Final Fantasy V used the same active time battle system introduced in Final Fantasy IV. In addition, this game also revived the job system that originated in Final Fantasy III. However, this time each job had special abilities that could be acquired by spending ability points obtained after defeating enemies. These abilities could be used in conjunction with other jobs, allowing players to fully customize their characters. In Final Fantasy V, players could travel by boat, airship, even wyvern, with each of these being tied directly into the storyline. The ever-popular Sid made his appearance with his grandson, Mid, as the two assist Bartz in modifying his airship. And of course, what would a Final Fantasy game be without chocobos? The lovable yellow steed appeared in this installment as Bart's faithful companion and played a role as important as any party member. However, one of the most impressive characters from Final Fantasy V would have to be Gilgamesh. While a ruthless enemy, his amiable character and quirky persona has led him to become one of the most popular side characters in the Final Fantasy series. Finally, who could forget the cute, cuddly Moogles? Since their introduction in the Final Fantasy series, these adorable little animals have charmed players across the world. Many North American players first experienced Final Fantasy VI as Final Fantasy III when it was released in October of 1994. The numbers were finally set straight in 1999 with the release of Final Fantasy Anthology for the PlayStation. In Final Fantasy VI, the Gestalt Empire holds dominion over the world. Locke, a member of a resistance group, saves Terra a woman used by the Empire as an instrument of war. A great many allies join the party during Final Fantasy VI, each with his own personality and unique set of abilities, allowing the player a great deal of freedom when assembling a battle team. 
Players could further customize their characters by equipping them with Magicite or accessories to unlock new spells and abilities. Chocobos, ships, and airships again came to the player's aid as they traversed the vast world of Final Fantasy VI. Airships served double duty, playing an important role in the backstory of Setzer, one of the characters who joins the party along the way. But it was more than airships and chocobos that defined Final Fantasy VI. Terra's Magitek armor, the Phantom Train, and the majestic Figaro Castle gave the game its own unique flavor. Sid appeared as a scientist at Gestal Empire's Magitek facility. Here he raised Celis, a knight who rebelled against the Empire's evil ways. Though he doesn't provide the party with an airship, his appearance is heartwarming and memorable. Of course, no one who's played Final Fantasy VI can forget the Opera House. Here, players took part in what was to become one of the defining moments of Final Fantasy. Originally released in Japan in January of 1997, the title hit North American shores eight months later in September. The Shinra company has taken control of Gaia's Mako energy and is now using fear and intimidation to tighten its grip on the world. The story begins when Cloud joins a resistance group as they attack one of Shinra's Mako reactors. Stepping away from the previous six games of the series, Final Fantasy VII used full polygon rendering for all monsters and characters. The move from 2D to 3D was a giant step for the series, sending shockwaves through the gaming community. However, graphics were not the only features to be improved upon. The revolutionary materia system introduced a new method of developing characters. By fitting their equipment with materia, characters could cast spells, use special abilities, and boost attributes. And just as characters gained in level, so too did materia, unlocking new, more powerful options. To ride a chocobo, players had to first find and engage one on the battlefield, then lure it into their party. In this installment, Sid assumed the role of a lance-wielding airship pilot, his aerial attacks being some of the most powerful in the game. Another beloved feature was the colossal theme park, the Gold Saucer. While not only being an important part of the story, it was also a place where players could take a break from adventuring and try their luck at several unique mini-games. One of the most exciting attractions being the Chocobo races, in which players could participate after raising their own Chocobo. Bahamut also made an appearance in Final Fantasy VII, lending his power to Cloud and the others in not one, but three breathtaking forms, Bahamut, Neo Bahamut, and Bahamut Zero. Final Fantasy VII has inspired a number of spin-offs. Advent Children continues the original story of Cloud in a feature-length, CG-rendered movie. Dirge of Cerberus follows the exploits of Vincent Valentine in a high-paced third-person shooter. Before Crisis uses the latest mobile phone technology to tell the story of Shinra's Turks. And Crisis Core reveals the events leading up to the original Final Fantasy VII. The second Final Fantasy title for the PlayStation was originally released in Japan in February of 1999, with the North American localized version debuting later that year. The adventure begins at Balam Garden, a futuristic training facility for young mercenaries, 
It is here that one of the cadets, Squall Leonhardt, learns of an evil force threatening the world and sets out on a journey that takes him beyond the boundaries of time. For the first time in the series, characters were designed in proportion to their surroundings. This allowed players to take part in an adventure more visually realistic than any they had ever experienced. Several dramatic new features were also introduced in Final Fantasy VIII, one being the junction system. Characters were joined with various beasts known as Guardian Forces. Over the course of the game, the Guardian Forces would grow and obtain new abilities. Another new feature was the draw system. To obtain new magic and improve attributes, characters had to draw magic out of various monsters. This complemented the traditional method of collecting experience points to develop a character. These two systems helped breathe new life into the often tedious task of leveling characters. In addition to the main hero, a second protagonist known as Laguna played an important role in the game's progression. By unraveling his story, players were able to take part in a grand tale. The airship appearing in Final Fantasy VIII was the Ragnarok. Not only a vehicle used to carry players across the world, the Ragnarok was also the stage for several of the game's important events. Chocobos again showed up as a convenient form of transportation, and by hooking up a pocket station to their console, players could participate in a chocobo digging minigame. Sid assumes the role of Balam Garden's headmaster, and while he does not join Squall and the others in battle, he often appears to guide them on their journey. The Japanese and North American versions of Final Fantasy IX were released almost simultaneously in the second half of 2000. One of the world's finest theater troupes, Tantalus, also happens to be one of the most notorious bands of thieves. Their current performance brings them to the Kingdom of Alexandria, where their true motive is to kidnap the young princess. The story begins as the paths of the thief Zidane, Princess Garnet, and a boy named Vivi cross. In an attempt to return to basics, Final Fantasy IX aimed to take on the fantasy color prominent in earlier titles of the series. However, this installment was not without new features. Final Fantasy IX introduced the active time event system, putting players in the middle of the action. Final Fantasy IX did not feature any job changing as party members already had set professions such as Thief, Dragoon, or Black Mage. Though by equipping items, characters could obtain various support abilities, giving players the option to further customize their party members. Final Fantasy IX also introduced a number of unique airships, such as the Prima Vista. Not only a vehicle, this grand vessel also became the setting for many of Tantalus's plays. Sid made his appearance as Regent of Lindblum, though in a different form than the one players had been used to. After being caught with another woman, his wife transforms him into an insect, and it is in this state that Zidane finds him. A number of mini-games were available to players who wished to take a break from the main story. From complex diversions such as the card game Tetramaster, to simple activities such as jumping rope, there was something for everyone. Dedicated players could even unlock a feature that allowed them to use a chocobo to hunt for buried treasure. Released for the PlayStation 2 on July 19th of 2001 in Japan and December 17th in North America, the move to a new platform saw a tremendous leap in graphic and sound quality. 
Final Fantasy X was the first game in the series to include story. voice acting and detailed facial animation, bringing the series to a new level of interactive today? entertainment. Promise! The story revolves around Tidus, a famous blitzball player who is pulled a thousand years into the future by a mysterious force. Departing from the active time battle system used since Final Fantasy IV, Final Fantasy X introduced the conditional turn-based battle system. This new system allowed party members to be swapped in and out during battle and lended the game a distinctly strategic feel. Players use the Sphere Grid to acquire new spells and abilities, allowing them to develop their characters as they liked. Players no longer traveled across a stylized world map, but instead moved from one intricate location to the next. Even so, the chocobo was still a welcome way to speed the party's journey. This time, Sid appears as the leader of the desert-dwelling Albed. He pilots an airship and is also the father of Riku, one of the lead characters. He's always there to lend the party a helping hand, and without him, the story wouldn't have been the same. The series' first attempt at a direct sequel, Final Fantasy X-2, further explored the world of Final Fantasy X. Much lighter in tone, the tale followed the adventures of Yuna and was the first game in the series to consist entirely of female lead characters. On May 16th of 2002, online service for the Japanese PlayStation 2 version of Final Fantasy XI began. Almost a year and a half later, the North American Windows version was released. By moving the series online, players from around the world on various systems such as the Xbox 360, Windows PCs, and the PlayStation 2 could join forces to battle evil in the ever-changing virtual world of Vanadil. Simply installing the data onto a hard disk and downloading all necessary patches opened the doors to a vast multi-platform MMORPG adventure. Recently, a third expansion disk, Treasures of Ot Urgan, was released, further expanding the world of Vanadil. These expansions, combined with the regular version updates, show that Final Fantasy XI is much more than a static, offline experience. It is a constantly evolving entity. Players start the game by creating an alter ego. There are five unique races and three different nationalities to choose from. While there is an enthralling main story that players may follow, Final Fantasy XI revolves around much more than that. Gameplay is founded upon the bonds created by players. Only an online game can offer the experience of partying up with living, breathing companions from locations across the globe. Ferries and airships can be found on Vanadil. While riding these ships, players can fish, purchase items, or interact with other players. Chocobos are also available for rental, and players can even breed and raise their own. Moogles fall into a support role, helping players keep track of their items, change jobs, and tend their gardens. Sid is a master engineer employed by the nation of Bastuk's Metalworks and is easily recognized by his goatee and apron. The popular character plays a large role in several quests and missions throughout the game. Released on March 16, 2006 in Japan and October 31st in North America, Final Fantasy XII is the latest addition to the series. Set against the backdrop of the vast world of Ivalice, 
The story tells of war between empires and the hidden players that moved them. The world of Ivalice first appeared in the strategy role-playing game Final Fantasy Tactics on the PlayStation. With an advanced job system and four-dimensional battles, the game won the praise of critics and fans alike. Though Ivalice again appeared in 2003's Final Fantasy Tactics Advance, it was a very different world, taken from the pages of a mysterious book entitled Final Fantasy. In May of 2006, Fabula Nova Cristalis, Final Fantasy XIII was announced. Latin for New Tale of the Crystals, the 13th installment in the world-renowned series aims to paint a montage of compelling stories, all bound by a single underlying mythos. Development is currently underway for multiple games spanning numerous consoles such as the PlayStation 3 and mobile phones. The evolution of Final Fantasy has continued alongside the evolution of gaming itself. And as long as there are those who seek the light of the crystals, the epic will continue on into the future.